the Commissioner of Police, Lagos State Command, Abiodun Alabi, has assured residents of adequate security following reports which suggested that the state is on the radar of some persons planning attacks across the country. Alabi gave this assurance in a statement issued by the state, Pol public, state police public relations officer Benjamin Udeni yesterday. He said, the command is also working closely with sister security agencies to ensure that no person or group of persons succeeds in destabilizing the peace and serenity enjoyed by the good people of Lagos State. According to the statement, I quote, Lagosians have been assured that all human material and operational resources have been fully and optimally deployed across the length and breadth of the state, especially our border towns, towards ensuring there is absolutely no breach of the peace, unquote. Joining us now to discuss the alleged planned terrorist attack on Lagos State is Police Public Relations Officer Benjamin Undeni. Welcome to the show. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yes, thank you for joining us. Well, you issued a statement assuring Lagos residents uh, that Lagos is safe and that there will be no terrorist attack. Are you uh, very sure about that? What structures do we have in place to make Lagos safe, considering the, the fact that even the federal capital territory, the seat of the federal government, is not safe? Well, like I issued, um, like I said in the statement I issued yesterday, that all human, material, and operational resources have been fully and optimally deployed across the length and breadth of the state to ensure that um, there is no terrorist attack, let me use your words, there is no terrorist attack in the state. So if you are asking what assurance do I have that there won't be an attack, well, it's possible there could be an attempt, but the assurance we are giving Lagosians is that we are fully on ground, we are fully alert to avert such uh, an attempt from succeeding. So we are also counting on the good people of Lagos State to, to join hands with us by providing information on any suspicious um, happening around them to enable us to do the needful and ensure the safety and security of the residents of Lagos State. What intelligence did you receive that influenced this sudden, you know, stance that we see with regards to Lagos State that influenced this um, statement that you had to publish? What is the intelligence? What is the nature of the threat to Lagos State? Okay, I would say this, um, we work with sister security agencies and we share intelligence and we've, we received intelligence. I might not want to, to go into details of the intelligence we received, but I would also confirm this, that um, this intelligence didn't just come up yesterday or two days ago. It's been there for like a week and we've been working on it, but the, the need arose to issue that statement because after um, a few attacks in, in the federal capital territory, we, we discovered that people in Lagos started panicking. I started receiving calls about an impending attack in Lagos. The Commissioner of Police started receiving calls. So we, we, we could gauge the feelings of Lagosians and we discovered that um, there was rising panic in the land. So the need arose to issue that statement to make them know that we are aware of such a rumor and we've been working hard to ensure that it doesn't happen. So. Asking me about the nature of the intelligence and what exact intelligence, I don't think I want to go into that. Right. So I'd like to ask, are you having collaborative efforts already uh, with other security agencies? You know, do we have adequate police officers in Lagos to be able to stem the tide of a possible attack on 22 million people and counting in Lagos? And most importantly, what would you like to say to uh, Ghani Adams, uh, uh, I think leader of the Odoas People's Conference talking about uh, that in some bushes in the southwest, terrorists are already camped there. What would you like to say to things like that that we're hearing? Okay, first, um, you talked about <coughs> officers in Lagos um, providing security for 22 million people. Yes, we are making the best 
we're making the best of what we have and we're we are confident that with the support of the good people of Lagos State, we would surmount these challenges. Um, somebody saying that terrorists have camped in states in the southwest, fine. I'm happy he did not mention Lagos State. Um, he has said his um, bit, and we, we, we do not discountenance it. We also take that into consideration to ensure that we fortify Lagos State, which is our immediate jurisdiction. So we're working on every available information, just like we call on people to, to, to let us know if they see anything suspicious. So we are not discounting it, we are working on it. Anyway, following an incident in the lucky part of uh, Lagos, the Lagos State Government decided to reinforce an existing ban on uh, the use of motorcycles, commercial motorcycles, on Lagos roads. That has been for a few months now. Um, is there any indication that that has had that move has had an impact on the crime rate in the state? Do you have statistics uh, to explain this, or it has made no difference? Yes, <laughs> it has made lots of difference, lots and lots of difference. And um, before that total ban came in place, um, we, we we recorded um, traffic robberies a lot. And that was easy for the robbers because they could get away on their motorcycles. Uh, but after that um, total ban came into effect, um, traffic robbery has reduced drastically. It has. Yeah, yes, we still have pockets of robberies here and there, but it has reduced drastically. Our statistics show that. And people who maybe come online to to talk about their experiences that, oh, I was robbed in traffic today, I was, you would also notice if you go online, you will also notice that that has also dropped drastically. So it was a wise decision and it has helped in restoring more serenity to the city and to the state of Lagos. I just want to go back. I know you've been very vague, deliberately for security reasons, I imagine, about the nature of the threat, but I have to ask, is it a swap or what's been known as bandits or Boko Haram? What exactly is behind this? And what is the threat level in Lagos? And what advice would you give to Lagosians? Is the police going as far now as to tell us about our movements, where we should go, where we should avoid? What exactly are you, you know, trying to communicate to the public here beyond that you'd like cooperation, of course? Well, um, if, if it gets to that point, and we hope not, if it gets to that point where we have to give um, travel advisory within Lagos to tell you where to go and where not to go, then we'd let people know. But at this point, we urge everyone to go about their lawful businesses all over the state. Uh, we are doing the best we can. Uh, the entry and exit points of the state are being closely monitored. And we can assure Lagosians that there's uh, nothing to worry about. Um, yes, I was vague about the intel we, we are working on, but that's in the best interest of everyone. But for now, the threat level is not alarming. We are not restricting anybody's movements. People can move about, but um, people can rest assured that if it gets to that level, we would let them know. And we want people not to relax. We want people to be very vigilant, very watchful, because security is everyone's business. So the moment they sight or spot something out of the ordinary, please inform the nearest security agency so that it can be looked into. Uh, so there was a point raised about, will this your surveillance cover the bridges, you know, other areas and spots, you know, close to roads that people just stay, that they might be carrying, you know, things to harm people. Oh, and what's your partnership like with private security companies and the likes? And I also want to talk about something that I would like to call internal terrorism in Lagos. The one million boys. I mean, what are you guys doing as regards the scourge of those one million boys attack everybody? And what are, what are you doing as regards a musician recently that came and said he, he founded the one million boys in Nigeria? Because when you say insecurity has dropped in Lagos, I'm like, are you kidding me? Go to Aja. Aja is a war zone. War zone. That's what Aja has become. War zone. And give me empirical stats, please. Okay. Um, you asked if um, we would be deploying our men to major roads and um, major Bridges. places in the States. Yes. You're still coming around to, 
to force me to um, disclose our strategies and our plans. Well, we are doing everything necessary. The highways that are flashpoints, that are vulnerable, yes, men will be deployed there. And in every other place that you might not even have thought of asking about, yes, we are deploying men. Um, one million boys, I don't know if that is still a thing. Yes, there used to be one million boys. I don't know if it's still a thing. I don't think so. Yes, we have um, street gangs engaging in um, fracas. Uh, we have people fighting. Yes, and we, we always respond accordingly. Um, the IRS has been doing a wonderful job in that regard. And most times when we um, get these people arrested, especially with weapons, yes, they are prosecuted. And I can, I can um, tell you that many of them have been remanded in prison. Yes, I might not be able to give you the exact um, statistics you need, but we keep arresting these people and um, we are doing um, the best we can to ensure that that is a thing of the past. Yeah, you talked about portable. You are referring to portable. That a musician talked about um, his involvement with one million boys. Yes, that investigation has been taken over by the first headquarters, the first criminal investigation department. So the moment um, the first CID took over, we stayed clear. So it's, it's, it's an ongoing investigation. I, I wouldn't be able to say much about it because it's happening in Abuja first headquarters. Okay, well, I mean, um, you are the man in charge of uh, information. Just by way of uh, educating the people of Lagos, where are those uh, vulnerable spots in Lagos that people have to watch out for, and what kind of security precautions do you need that people should take? Do you think people should take as you move towards uh, a major election season? Yes, um, vulnerable spots in Lagos. Well, anywhere could turn very vulnerable at any time. So I don't want to start saying this place or that place. Anywhere could be vulnerable. Okay, maybe, at any time. maybe we shouldn't say um, vulnerable. The maybe the right word is hot spots. You are still referring to the same thing. Vulnerable, hotspots, flashpoints. Yeah, we are still saying the same thing. But um, the most important thing is for everybody to be very watchful, very vigilant. You asked about what people should do as we approach um, the election, electioneering period. Yes, it's still about being watchful. Do not keep late nights. Let somebody somewhere know your movements, where you're going to and um, always be watchful before you board vehicles. If you don't have a good feeling about the people in the vehicle, yes, please trust your hunch and don't go in there. If you are using ride-hailing apps, follow the security precautions. Ensure that the, the number plate is the same as you find on the app. Just generally be watchful. Once something doesn't feel right, take precaution or report to the nearest security agency so that um, we can do the right thing. Right, beyond Lagos now, on a national level, can you just take us through the role of the police force in the fight against terrorism? We do know that the police are involved because the police force has the casualties to prove that. Over 60 police officers have been killed tragically. That's my first question. And secondly, what do you make of the proposed ban, a, nation, a national um, wide ban, on motorcycles that's been proposed by the federal government and the argument, the counter argument that it could lead to an increase in crime when those who had been using motorcycles for their living to earn a crust would have to resort to other means. Uh, well, I don't really feel comfortable that you want to take me out of Lagos and talk about national issues since the first public relations officer is there. I don't want to encroach into his stuff uh, but nonetheless I would I would say a little about what you asked the role of the police in terrorism well I think that is basic enough the the, the mandate of the police is to uh, protect lives and property and well one of the mandates to protect lives and property and we're doing that we're doing that just um, last week the IGP talked about um, focusing more on terrorism, so, so uh, as a way of reducing terrorism and, in fact, ending terrorism in Nigeria. So we are doing the much we can. We are we are using all the laws we've been empowered 
uh, we are using all the powers we have that has been given to us by law to ensure that terrorism ends. I don't think I'll be able to go into more details than that. Then um, the proposed nationwide ban on motorcycles. People have the fear that if you do that, then crime will increase because these uh, motorcycle riders will have nothing to do but to go into crime. No, we can't keep thinking that way. The, the question is, when there was no motorcycle as business, people survived. And if we weigh these things and see that um, the disadvantages are actually more than the advantages, then we need to stop it. We, we shouldn't um, say that it would lead to more crime and will allow something bad continue to happen. So if they don't have motorcycles to ride, they would find other meaningful things to do. Anybody who goes into crime because they're not riding motorcycle is just criminally minded. They would find other things to do. And in any case, if that ban eventually comes into effect, then yes, the police would always be prepared for the negative aftermath of that, oh, aftermath, yes, aftermath of that in the event that people decide to go into crime. So we're not unmindful of the fact that it could lead to more crime and would always be ready to checkmate the upsurge in crime if it happens. There's another argument about the increase in the number of what they call one chance in Lagos. People take a commercial vehicle, load up with passengers, drive to a certain point and rob them of their livelihood. There's a recurring case of things like this in Fagba area of Lagos. I mean, what are you doing as regards that? Also a recurring case of core clashes in Oworoshoki and K2 areas of Lagos and most other parts of the mainland. Well, what's your, what's your take on all of these issues? Okay, um, one chance that it's, it's increasing in the States, I, I dispute that claim. I dispute that claim. It's not on the increase. Yeah, it's possible that uh, one chance happens here, it happens there, and people make so much noise about it. You know, someone tweets something about one chance and uh, it gets a thousand retweets. It always gives that feeling that it's happened a thousand times. No, it's just making so much um, noise about it. Um, so it's not on the increase. Yes, we know it happens. Um, that's why I said earlier during the interview that people need to be very watchful and very careful. And we've arrested one chance operators too. I, I did, I made press statements about that. We arrested them and they've been prosecuted. Uh, they are in court as we speak. I will continue to do that. Um, you talked about court clashes. in you know, Shoki, K2. Yes, court clashes. This, this has been going on every now and then. Street um, boys ganging up to fight one street fighting the next street. Yes, each time this happens, that, that's why, that's why um, when I came on board, I published the phone numbers of all the POs and all your recommenders in Lagos State. Everybody should have these things because when these fights are going on in your street, you are the one to inform the DPO, the nearest DPO, to, to, to come quell the riots. And people have been helping. People have been helping. Last week, I know somebody contacted me to say, the same case you mentioned, like these boys keep disturbing us at night. And I was able to link him up with the DPO, and they've been working hand in hand, and that has been going down. So we are working um, with residents in these areas to reduce this um, incident of court clashes. But in the same vein, um, we, we, we always call on parents, guardians, political leaders, religious leaders to talk to these youths. They also have a role to play. Talk to them, talk them out of cultism because it doesn't pay. If you come to our cell in the state headquarters, you will see people, young boys who have just ruined their life. Well, I hope that they can still get back on track. But you see young boys who have been arrested for cultism, some of them have killed. And once you go into cultism, your life cannot be the same. It's either you end up in prison, it's either the person dies or your progress in life slows down. So we, as much as we're doing our best, we are also calling on people out there to also rein in on these boys, um, these young ones, to to stay out of cult. Chance operator, so that people can probably learn. How do you detect when you see a boss, for instance? Sorry, I didn't get that. Signs, signs that a boss might be a one chance operator. How do you detect? Unfortunately, a criminal wants to appear like the real McCoy. So it doesn't want to give you an indication that it's a criminal. So it might actually be difficult to, to tell that a vehicle is 
being operated by one chance criminals. It might be difficult to tell, but just be watchful. I, I don't want to start saying um, a vehicle with only men. Don't buy the vehicle with only men. Uh, well, there, there could be a vehicle with all men and they are not criminals. So one just has to be very careful. Make sure you bought vehicles at designated bus stops. Because this one chance happens most times when um, people pick, um, enter bought vehicles along the way, not at bus stops. Then uh, make sure that they are painted the Lagos State color, not just a random Camry. The last time we arrested one chance operators, it was just a random Camry, no Lagos color. It wasn't even one of the ride hailing companies, just a Camry like that. And they picked up this lady, not at the bus stop, but just somewhere along the road. So for starters, make sure you pick the, um, your bought vehicles at designated bus stops, Lagos color, and be very watchful. Have speed dials. Most of our phones these days have speed dials, have emergency contacts. Press the side button five times for some phones, and it sends your location and, um, and, and the message that you're in danger. So it might be a bit difficult, but if everybody is being very watchful and do the right thing, picking vehicles at the right spot, um, it, will, it will reduce the possibility of um, falling in the hands of one chance a great deal. Okay, Mr. Andini, let me ask you. The Inspector General of Police, we're told, has just uh, given a directive that uh, uh, movie makers, producers of skis, should stop using uh, police uh, uniform and insignia uh, in their representations. Because the uh, suggestion is that given the relevant section of the criminal code, is these artists that are giving uh, policemen in Nigeria a bad image, in addition to shops where police uniforms uh, are sold in parts of Nigeria. Is the problem with the people expressing their right to artistic freedom and making films, making skits, or the problem is with the policemen that we meet on a daily basis uh, asking for uh, good money. I, I hear that one who was asking for better money has now been dismissed from the police force. Or the uh, gun-happy policemen who are misbehaving on a daily basis on the streets of uh, Nigeria. I don't expect you to criticize your boss, but uh, is, it the, is the problem with entertainers or with the police as an institution? You can give an independent opinion if it is possible. Of course, you know it's not possible. I speak for the police. I can't give an independent opinion. But um, the IGP has not um, stopped or banned the total use of police uniform by skit makers. No. It is the negative use of these uniforms. The, 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 the use of this uniform to portray the force in a bad light. Uh, that's what we are kicking against. So for, for movie makers, movie makers approach us every now and then to say we want to do a movie and would need police uniforms directly from you so that it looks very real and we provide them. We provide them with this um, uniform. So it's, it's, it's important not to pass the wrong message. Yes, you would want to argue that they are not passing the wrong message, they are just um, replicating what happens out there. But still, it's our duty to ensure that um, people don't use our uniforms to, to portray us in bad lights. If it's not police uniform you are using, if it's not Nigeria police uniform, yeah, we, we might even um, understand that. But as long as Nigeria police uniform, uh, you, you should be patriotic enough to do the right thing. Uh, I don't know, have I answered your question or there was a second part to that question? No, I was asking where really is the problem. In other words, what is the police doing more about discipline, about his own image, rather than blaming third parties for misrepresenting the police? How can the police determine well, well. how artists should uh, express themselves? <laughs> okay, in terms of discipline, we are doing everything within our power to ensure that discipline is entrenched in the force. Um, the, the, the video that went viral uh, since two weeks ago, I'm sure you are aware that that policeman has been dismissed because what it did was very, very unprofessional. And they even engaged in corrupt practice. He has been dismissed. Um, I think, I think we, we, we need to do more as a force in um, publishing 
figures, statistics of those people we, we have disciplined. Those that have been dismissed, those that have been reduced in rank, those that have been suspended. I think this would go a long way in convincing people that these things happen. But they, they do happen. I, I witnessed one last week in Lagos here where um, an inspector was demoted to sergeant. You know, you know, I, I was shocked. Well, I'm not shocked sure at the punishment, but I was, I, I, my attention was drawn to it because I saw this person crying profusely and uncontrollably. So I had to go there to ask what happened to her. And they just showed me the, the inspector rank. They just took off her uniform and she was wearing the sergeant rank. So that's just one example. These things happen regularly. We have a provost department that is always, always looking into discipline of officers. We have the complaint response unit in Abuja. We have the monitoring unit. We have the X squad. So we have these, um, uh, these departments and units that look into discipline. And they are not idle. They are not idle. They are working every day. And at this way, I need to urge Nigerians to take advantage of these things. Because truly, to, to, to punish a police officer, most times, somebody needs to complain. Somebody needs to either write to, to the command to say, this police officer engaged in corrupt practice. This police officer did this. That would enable us to look into it. And these people should be willing to actually testify. Because our disciplinary process, the Audley Room trial, actually needs somebody to come forward to say, yes, I witnessed this person do this. So many people don't want to do that. Many people just feel, no, 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 I don't have time to do that. No, I don't even want to go there. Ah, no, they are going to charge me. In fact, they will rope me. That's the language. They will rope me. I will now be um, a suspect. No. For the few that have done that, you, you can see testimonies online. For the few that have done that, that have come to report that this person did this, and they are willing to write a statement, they are willing to testify, these officers are actually disciplined. So we need more people to, to do this. And together, we can actually get that police force that we all desire. Right, uh, Alexis, thank you to you, Ben. Uh, but maybe when we engage next, we'd like to talk about Aja, because Aja is a ticking time bomb, especially under the bridge in Aja and some other parts of Aja as regards to insecurity. But time is not our friend. We need to go. Thank you for your time.